holler if you hear me, and welcome to this edition of uh, Luke Flips, because there's going to be even more developments happening in the world of overhauling the DC Extended Universe. Well, now it's been changed, even that alone, just that little expression, just that little abbreviation. It was DCEU from the days of Man of Steel coming out. Well, that's now altered to the point where instead it's going to be the DC Universe simply now as it's known in the cinematic world with uh, James Gunn and his number two. Supposedly they've been in the middle of somewhere in Aspen, Colorado, feverishly working to rewrite the whole future of the franchise of DC Comics. And not just in movies, but apparently it also is going to involve video games and even live action and cartoon series that's going to be on streaming services. And that is is okay they're very thorough I'll, they do deserve the credit for this they are attempting a very thorough overhaul and a very thorough tight focused direction and they're probably gonna what they're doing here is probably more thorough pre-planning on how to build this up than anything we'll ever see what was ever happening before with the Zack Snyderverse which I was a fan of and even with the Marvel Cinematic Universe where there was an interview where Kevin Feige from I think last year even said what was the pre-planning for the phases one after another when they started and really they were not that thoroughly developing like stage by stage step by step but at least with what's being reported from your trade magazines you know your Variety your Hollywood Reporter and also what the what's being repeated from Bounding in a Comics or a CBR, all that, all those people out there, is this idea of how they they have this ten year plan. Well, we first heard about this ten year plan uh, initially around the time of when David Zaslav first was coming into Warner Brothers and uh, slapping away the crap that was the Batgirl movie. Well, now we're getting even more of that with uh, what are now examples of how we were all excited about Black Adam. Oh, Black Adam! It was the biggest opening weekend for The Rock. Well. Remember, it really does go to show just how much of a paper tiger that The Rock must be as a leading man. If the biggest opening weekend of his career, and still it didn't get $100 million domestically, and still it's now shown that it's going to be losing money for Warner Brothers in a time where they need massive hits one after another after another. And, of course, there's all these other big punches now, even with the big surprise over Henry Cavill appearing at the end of of good old-fashioned Black Adam and him announcing that he's walking out on The Witcher to go back to Superman and wanting to be about hope and joy. Well, now there's the recent developments of Jason Momoa is stepping away from Aquaman and they're going to give him some other, yes, I'm going to use finger quotes, other DC major role. Well, take a good look at Jason Momoa and guess which one is going to be the movie that they're going to give him as a DC role instead of Aquaman. Well, it starts with an L, ends with an O, and sorry, T. Frank, it, it doesn't stand for uh, Lesbian Hobo. It's uh, Lobo, and for that, him in a movie, all right. And considering the wake of the post-Deadpool world, there might actually be a much better chance than before of seeing an R-rated Lobo with Jason Momoa and just him naturally looking the part like that brief time when they had Jason Momoa signed on to be in the remake of The Crow, and they were as far into development or pre-production as having him be, uh, pose on social media with the director where he was in the full crow makeup, but with his hair and, and his physique, he looks less like the crow and more like Lobo. So maybe that mm, that's just wishful thinking. That's just unconfirmed speculation. And I'm not really one to go and try to say that with any real emphatic authority without further proof or further evidence along considering the circumstances. This isn't like us not having any real and you know, all concrete proof about Jennifer Lawrence owing her career to Harvey and the casting couch, but come on, it, we know. We know how Harvey was around the world and all the public appearances uh, she was making with him and how much she loved him, how she's probably been more publicly photographed happily alongside Mr. Weinstein than any man she ever dated or is now married to. Yeah. And guess what's next? Also, something else that has been confirmed besides Jason Momoa now stepping away from Aquaman and all that is also the concept that Wonder Woman 3 has been... <laughs> And the box office failure of Black Adam, yeah, most likely, but that speculation without any exact details being put out there means, oh yeah, we're also going to see that being gone. And yes, Wonder Woman 3, yes, that was uh, leaked by The Hollywood Reporter about, oh yes, Patty Jenkins once again, like the insufferable Wonder Woman 1984. She had her own story she was trying to develop, she had her own treatment for the story, and guess what? 
it wound up being not completely rejected. It wasn't just thrown into the trash and she was fired for it being bad. What happened was in the circumstances, as it was explained in this Hollywood Reporter leak, was that they offered script notes. I believe it was Mr. Saffron, Peter Saffron, if that is his name, and James Gunn. We had these corrections we want to make. And her being the kind of post uh, Me Too conceited narcissistic dint in Hollywood who's been handed her authority or handed her career based off of her gender and off of repeating current thing back to uh, jacket napes who believe that being woke is more important than having talent. Of course, she's storming off and supposedly is uh, going to be done with because how dare you question my vision? What was that vision, lady? Yeah, the vision that made... Thor Ragnarok look like a damn masterpiece. The difference is that DC doesn't have all the mainstream critics and shill people like Collider or like a CBR completely completely baffled by just how deep their bribery goes to blindly praise anything that's a Walt Disney production. So that incoherent, self-important hipster porn that's doing a bad imitation of Guardians of the Galaxy, which in and of itself was a, was a successful imitation of Joss Whedon. So you're dealing with this, you doing a fourth generation of a third generation inbred photocopy of the Joss Whedonisms with uh, Wonder Woman 1984, and you're doing it for a studio that doesn't have a shill uh, access media and a Hollywood Reporter and those other kind of websites and newspapers bribed to blindly praise it and treat it like it's all perfect and all great. When you just take a good long look, if Thor Ragnarok was so great, how come even compared to the Guardians movies, it had less box office? So it was already a downward trajectory from there that was praised simply because it was a Disney production and simply because it wasn't for the dark world, all right? So instead of us getting the Wonder Woman equivalent of Wonder Woman Love and Thunder, apparently there was some attempts by James Gunn and Peter Saffron to give some corrections, but now this post-entitlement age of women in Hollywood, it was something where she is storming off because apparently she's completely forgotten. A lot of people, when they talk, when you see the women talk about this or when you see any kind of minority who's been propped up based on being an utter NPC for a repeating current thing back to the rich white liberals that are handing them careers like a Jordan Peele or what have you, you're getting all this talk about how there's they are so important or this is such a horrible history of all the adversity they faced and the, it's not just Jennifer Lawrence under the delusion that there was no other female action star before her. You know, the, the, there was the great Babylon Bee headline of Sigourney Weaver thanking her for trailblazing women action stars when I'd have an addendum for the Babylon Bee. It's Pam Greer and Sigourney Weaver since Foxy Brown and Coffee and Friday Foster was even before Alien came out. And there she was, gun toting and ass whooping. But now, all right. And think about all of that stuff and really think what's going on here about you want to talk about how you are these trailblazers compared to all this history came before you. But take a good look at where you started. Yeah, Margot Robbie trying to lecture us at some award shows about Me Too when she got her stardom literally spreading her legs for the right man, and she was stupid enough to do it on camera. At least with all the actresses from J. Law to Scarlett Johansson who owe their careers to sleeping with a director and, of course, giving a little something some to Harvey Weinstein, they were smart enough to spread their legs for stardom off camera, on the casting couch or in the trailer, not actually on set with cameras rolling. All right? All right there, sweet lips? And similar with uh, Miss Patty Jenkins, uh, you do know you, you're you treating yourself like you are the second coming of a Lenny Riefenstahl when you are aware it wasn't too long ago the best directing job you could get was a single episode of Entourage. All right, babe? Yeah, so you were like Joss Whedon in reverse, who was went from being a hotshot TV producer and then transitioned to being hotshot for writer, producer, director for movies, and then all of the dirty deeds proving his male feminist hypocrisy came out, and then he collapsed, and the best things he can do now is uh, directing an episode of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and something on HBO Max that came and went like that because... Uh, it was, like most Joss Whedon productions, a miserable failure, but he had such a cult of personality and such a PR hive mind around him that Firefly coming and going without even a full season and the Serenity movie being a box office failure and also other episodes that he would do fill in episodes for directing shows like, say, The Office or his show Dollhouse that also came and went pretty damn quickly. It, la it had a shorter run than Dark Angel. And remember, Dark Angel was an actually interesting sci-fi female-led 
post-Buffy action show with post-Titanic James Cameron producing it. And even that, he had to fight with the late 90s, 2000s era Fox, where if something wasn't an immediate ratings juggernaut, it got shit-canned within of 10 episodes, all right? Does anybody remember The Street? Yes, that stock market show from the creator of Sex and the City with a just before winning an Oscar, Jennifer Connelly on it, that got 10 episodes before Fox canceled it. Yeah, those same Fox that canceled the uh, X-Files spinoff, The Lone Gunman, after not even having a full season when its ratings were higher than season one's ratings for The X-Files, the show was spun off from. I just think about those bits for a second. It shows you what happens when you actually start to believe your own PR, when the cult of conceit, not even the cult of personality, because feminists don't really have personalities, or the women who utilize that kind of feminist rhetoric to get what they want, whether or not they really believe in them or not, or whether they really practice it. E.G. Scarlett Johansson crying about being sexualized when she owes her entire career to her tits, her hips, and her ass. I don't see you complaining about being treated like a piece of ass when every single solo character poster of you in the Marvel Cinematic Universe before you got knocked up was reminding us all the vital information that you have a booty or that you have heaving tits. But then suddenly, now you're too old for the casting couch, so what are you going to do to keep yourself there right now? Yeah, oh, now you're going to complain and cry and pretend to be a victim when you damn well knew what you were doing, you know, j g laughing while you got groped in your cleavage hoisting red dress of the Golden Globes this whole time, or when you were nude with two other bony bitches pale as ghosts on the cover of Vanity Fair with just one hand over your, your massive, massive heaving titties and calling that a wardrobe for the cover. Yeah. It's a simple example. It was not too long ago, remember, for a woman who was all about in interviews about the importance of women and all that, like Patty Jenkins. Lady, you directed an episode of Entourage. All right, what was bro culture in Hollywood form being celebrated like nobody's business, okay? Now, I what I wouldn't give to see Jeremy Piven come up to her place in character, masquerading as her agent, he's got sunglasses on, takes him off, then it's him going full in character as his entourage role and just screaming in her goddamn face about how much of an empty-headed little bitch she is. And guess what? You push the wrong buttons too far now, guess what? That Cleopatra remake you were going to do with Gal Gadot, gone. That sequel of Wonder Woman 3 you're going to do, gone. Any chance you ever have of directing anything more important than uh, fill-in episodes of a uh, lesbian, elderly, Muslim couple living in Alabama series, gone, gone, gone. Gone, baby, gone, all right? This is a matter of, we are not sure about what the fate of Black Adam and those sequels might be. More likely it'll fail. More likely there won't be sequels. We aren't sure, so sure about what the future of Henry Cavill's Superman's going to be. If that's going to be another clean slate and even with all of the hype about Henry Cavill returning, instead they're just going to go stop and recast. Damn more likely that what's going to be happening with Flashpoint, they're just going to use that and rewrite that ending to go and just wipe away anything DCEU related. All that's going to be gone and gone and gone. Let's hope also that the empty-headed uh, Margot Robbie will be gone as well. So now she's going to have to find some other reason to screech for woke points to keep her name in the limelight when we she damn well knows that she's box office poison who owes her career to her body, not her acting or her personality. So she'll have to go back to doing interviews crying about how her female-led Pirates reboot's been canceled or how she's always wanted to have her character of Harley Quinn reduced to nothing more than lesbian propaganda with her and Poison Ivy doing their best impersonation of every cutscene from The Last of Us 2. And well, Wonder Woman 3, if uh, getting rid of Patty Jenkins and getting rid of her terrible writing, which objectively her work on the first Wonder Woman was helped by having Zack Snyder there as a producer and as a co-writer, in spite of what the miserable losers at Red Letter Media want to tell you about how Zack Snyder was a hack and it was Patty Jenkins and Wonder Woman who made it so much better in the same universe with Batman v Superman, wrong. Zack Snyder was a good thing for that production and did her a favor. So having no Zack Snyder involved in DC in the future, but if that also means getting rid of Patty Jenkins as well to completely start over and actually make this work, all right, then there's a far better shot of this being far more entertaining than anything we're going to see from Marvel Phase 5. And that's not my opinion. I know I'm right. 
I want to thank you all for watching. Remember, if you're new, subscribe. Check that you still are subscribed if you're a returning viewer. And for new and returning viewers out there, do not forget the best way to support my channel since this channel is still not monetized two months after making all the requirements and filling in the application. Now almost coming into three months that you can go and shop in my Square store. That is the first link in the description below where my pen and ink art is 25, my color art is 30, my sketchbooks are 25. You can commission a pen and ink piece for 60. A pen and ink piece there, those commissions, sorry, are 50. Color commissions are 60 or trading card commissions are 20. And those are available as the last items in my color drawing categories, pen and ink illustration categories, or in my posters category. Those are large hand-drawn, hand-colored posters for 200 apiece. Don't forget, you can also remember whenever you buy in the store, one thing or several things, it's only coming with a flat $5 shipping and handling fee. And you can also donate any dollar amount you'd like to support me. Donations are the first thing you see in the store right there. And any denomination from around the world is taken. So if you live outside of America and you want to commission or buy my work, you would have to make your payment as a donation since my store cannot receive orders from foreign addresses. Add up what you want, US dollars include another 25 US for the international shipping and handling fee, and your items will ship immediately. You can also donate through my Streamlabs. That is the second link in the description below as well. So until then, let's hope that all this cancellation is a better future for DC. So until then, remember felines, slam it, lick it, suck it, and see you, Space Cowboy.